In today's review, we are going to take a look at the Godox U-Mic 82. This is Godox's brand new USB condenser microphone. Is this a good mic for you? Let's find out. Hi everyone, welcome to Pal the Tech. Every time Godox releases a new product, and it's not a light, I'm always curious as to what they come up with. Lately, Godox has been getting into making audio gear, and with the release of the new Godox U-Mic 82, it's time to start thinking of them beyond just flash and lighting products. Now, most microphones have two types of connector cords. You either have the 3.5 millimeter jack, that's the type of connector for external audio on Fujifilm cameras, or on higher end microphones like this Deity S Mic 2, you have an XLR connector. The problem is that if you're wanting to connect either of these microphone types to a laptop or desktop computer, you're gonna run into issues, as fewer and fewer computers these days are including the 3.5 millimeter mic jack. And there's definitely not an XLR port anywhere on this laptop. So in order to connect one of these with one of these, you're going to need to use a USB microphone. Now, let's take a close closer look at this new Godox mic. First, a disclaimer. This video is not sponsored. Godox did send over this mic for me to test and review. Godox did not pay me to create this review, nor were they allowed to have any input into its creation. And they didn't get to see this video until right now when it's been published for everyone. The mic includes two cables. One is a USB-A and the other a USB-C. Now the mic can be mounted in one of three ways. Using the included stand that comes with it, the mic also has a screw thread at the bottom, which allows you to attach it to any podcasting boom arm, just like I have this set up here. And lastly, you can get a 5 eighths of an inch male to 3 eighths of an inch female mic screw and attach it to a tripod like this. Well, hey there, and welcome to the Pal to Tech podcast. Now on the microphone itself, you've got two controls on the front side that are facing you, the volume knob and a mute button. The volume knob controls the volume of the sound coming out of the headphone jack of the bottom of the mic. And having a dedicated button to mute the microphone is great for podcasting because it allows you to quickly mute the mic, right? So let's say you're doing a podcast, you know, well, I think that uh, the raw file, I got to go pee like a racehorse. I'll be back in just a second. Then you go and you come back. Yes, raw files are very good off Fujifilm cameras. Now on the rear of the microphone, you've got two important controls. Gain allows you to control how loudly this mic is picking up and sending signal back to your computer. And the sound pattern selector button gives you four choices here. Stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bidirectional. And for those of you new to audio, listen up, because you do need to understand these four basic audio patterns. Stereo is what you think it is. It allows the mic to utilize its left and right channels together to give you a stereo effect. Now, omnidirectional tells the microphone to pick up sound equally in all directions. So it'll sound the same from the front or the back or the sides. It picks up evenly all the way around it. The next one, cardioid, is my favorite. It only will pick up sound right from the front of the microphone and ignore everything that's going on on the back and the sides. This is the best one to have for general use because when you're speaking into the microphone, it won't be picking up background noise, right? Suppose you're typing on a keyboard right here, you're talking into the mic, the mic is not going to pick up the as much, right? Because this entire side of the mic will not be active, just the front. And lastly, you have bi-directional. This tells the microphone to only record from the front of the mic and the back of the mic, not the sides. And this is great if you're sitting across the table from someone and you only have one microphone. You put it between you, and as you're talking, it's picking up. As the other person's talking, it's picking up, and it's ignoring the sides. So to get started, you simply connect the mic using the included cable to your computer's USB port. Once connected, the computer will sense the mic, and you can choose it from a drop-down list in any program that you're using to record audio. For example, here it is right here in Zoom. So I'm gonna do a test now and record some completely unprocessed audio for you to hear. If you have a set of headphones, I recommend putting them on now for the best way to judge the audio hearing this video. For the purposes of this demo, I am recording it at about halfway on the gain and I have it set to cardioid. If you're making anything at all and you find yourself frustrated that your work isn't appreciated the way you wish it was today, lift up your eyes. 
take a longer view of things. Now, as a comparison, I will test against the Blue Yeti, which is a popular mic with basically the same features. Frustrated that your work isn't appreciated the way you wish it was today, take a longer view of things. Take a longer view of things. And in comparing the Blue Yeti with the Godox and really listening carefully with studio headphones, the audio quality between these two microphones is very similar. I'd say that maybe the Godox has just a tiny bit more of a fuller sound to it, but it is so close between these two, it's almost identical to me. So for my next test, I had to find the quietest place I could, and that is always inside my car, inside my garage. It's so quiet in here. I'm gonna go ahead and be as quiet as I can be and record nothing. And what that'll tell us is how much floor noise is this mic possibly picking up? I have it connected using the USB right into the laptop into Audacity. Okay, so shh. Well, this concludes my audio quiet room test. I actually don't wanna leave. I like it here in my car, in my garage. Here in my car, the Godox mic retails for $130. The Blue Yeti is $100. So you're paying $30 more for the Godox mic. Now, if you're basing your decision purely on sound quality alone, you might want to think about the Blue Yeti for the $30 savings. However, when I buy a piece of equipment, one of the primary considerations I take into account is design. And frankly, I have never been a huge fan of the design of the Blue Yeti. These back knobs right here are way too tight. So for example, when I turn the gain knob here, it's really loose. But when I turn it up right here, it's so tight I can barely turn it over. And the connection port on the back is the older USB-A port and not USB-C as on the Godox. But the biggest difference between these two from a design perspective has to do with how the mount is. With the Godox, you get just these two screws right here. And the area that you put the mic to connect it on is made out of kind of a thick rubber. It does doesn't scratch the mic when you're taking it on and off, and there's no moving parts to lose. You simply attach the mic like this, screw it in, and it is so easy. And once it's in, it works flawlessly. These just feel great. Now the Blue Yeti, on the other hand, is a little more difficult. In fact, I've actually lost the piece on the right side of the mic. Look at this. That's just my point, right? You have all these little parts, and it's just... I don't like that. I lose them, they scratch the mic up, and you know, I know that that's not sound quality, but it's design. It's just, it's easier and faster for me to attach this than it is this one. I'm probably being nitpicky, but you know what? This is my review video and that's my opinion. So I find it easier to attach and detach the Godox mic to the stand than I do the Blue Yeti mic to the stand. I also like the fact that the Godox mic is smaller and it, overall, it feels more solid to me. Me. All in all, there's a lot to like with this mic, and whether you consider a Blue Yeti or this Godox unit, both are very capable microphones and sound nearly identical. If I did not have either mic and I was in the market for a USB microphone, I would definitely go with the Godox because I like the design, I like the feel, and I like the ergonomics better. I think Godox did their homework in designing this mic and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with next. Well, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you again in another video very soon. Take care.